respect uh, to our God, who is an awesome God. Um, several of you had asked me through when we started this series on the Holy Spirit, said you can't wait till we get to blaspheme on the Holy Spirit. I hope you're not disappointed. I hope it's going to be informative. Uh, when I was a boy, I can remember, uh, well, maybe a, a young, maybe 12, 13, 14 years old. When you're that age, you think you know everything. But I was young and I heard an, a discussion, an argument one time. Uh, from my mother and uh, one of her uh, brothers on this very subject. She said the Bible says that there is an unpardonable sin. It's an unforgivable sin. And uh, I can remember that discussion. I thought, man, you mean you can commit a sin that God would never forgive us for? And what would that sin be? And so I was listening intently, and I just remember that they were talking about blaspheming, and if you blaspheme against God, you blaspheme against uh, the Holy Spirit, you can never, ever be forgiven. So I've had that in my mind through the years, and the first time I ever read, and we're going to read them here in just a moment, uh, these Scriptures, it was very interesting to me because I thought, is that what my mother was talking about? Let's go to Matthew 12, 31 and 32. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blaspheming shall be forgiven unto men. But the blaspheming, and my King James has got the italics uh, against, it's not in the original, but the blaspheming, the Holy Spirit, shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this age, or in this world, nor in the world to come. Because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on neither in this world, neither in the world to come. If you actually did a word study, and what you would come up with is the idea that Jesus is saying, yeah, I'm going to be going away. And if you blaspheme against me, you can be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you can't be forgiven, nor in this age, nor the age to come. What he's talking about, he's talking about the law of Moses, the present age. Then he's talking about the Christian age and the age to come. Uh, that is what's under consideration. Now let's go to Mark chapter 3, and we'll be looking at what Mark says, his account of this particular uh, reading. Mark 3, 28 and 29. It's kind of interesting when you read Mark's account, almost verbatim of what Matthew's account is. And he says in verse 28, Verily I say to you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemings wherewith uh, soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath, neither for, hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Luke 12, in verse two, 10, we're not going to read that, uh, but kind of goes along with the same idea. Now, what I want to do, on Sunday nights, I've been putting my full content up on the screen because uh, I want you uh, to be able to read it as a, not as, as well as to be able to hear it. Some of you, even today, I got a couple of requests that they wanted uh, the outline for this morning's lesson. I'll do that tonight if you want that, a PDF. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you that there is blaspheme against God, there's blaspheme against the Holy uh, against uh, Jesus Christ, then there is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Why can you be forgiven of blaspheming against God? Why can you be forgiven of blaspheming against Jesus, but you can't be forgiven for blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? I'll prove that to you tonight. For many people, one of the most fearful words in all the New Testament is this word blaspheming. And literally, the word means to speak evil of or to rail against. And in reality, it's represented as a horrible sin. But what is it? Jesus says you can blaspheme against me, 
and you can be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you cannot be forgiven in the Christian age that is to come. Jesus was living under the Mosaic age. He knew that when He went back to heaven, and he, as He died on the cross, that would usher in a new covenant, and you've got a different set of rules, a different set of laws that's going to be ushered in uh, by Jesus Himself who has established this new covenant. Now, have I been guilty of it? Can one be, maybe as a young age, say, I'm speaking against the Holy Spirit? Is that what He's talking about? And I say that as an early age, maybe even do it in ignorance and not really understand, does that mean that I'm doomed, that I can never, ever be forgiven? Well, I suggest to you, if you look at the Word in its context, and you go back to Matthew uh, chapter uh, 12, and when you look at it, the, the noun blasphema, and its kindred terms, the blasphemo, can refer to a variety of attitudes and actions. Let us consider several of these. Blaspheme against God. Can you be forgiven of blaspheme against God, speaking against God? Yes. For the names of God, Romans 2.24, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you as it is written. What did Paul say? Paul said to the Romans that they had blasphemed the very name of God and yet they had been forgiven. Paul admonished in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 1 that Paul admonished these Christian servants to honor their masters in order that the name of God and the doctrine of uh, be not blasphemed. So, here were people that were blaspheming God. Is that a bad thing to do? You better believe it is. Of course it is. When you speak against God, that is a bad thing to do. No doubt about it. But how can men otherwise blaspheme God? If someone were to deny the very existence of God, would that not be blaspheming against God? Psalm 14 verse 1, The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Scripture, scripture speaks of deluded souls in their uh, sinlessness refuse to uh, uh, retain God in their knowledge. Romans 1 Verse 18, following. Does that mean that if a person in his ignorance, in his unlearned state, denies that there is a God, that, that he could never be forgiven? Oh yeah, you can blaspheme God, but it'll be forgiven. So, what does it mean to blaspheme Christ? You can blaspheme Christ. You ever thought about that? You can blaspheme God, and you can blaspheme Christ. As a matter of fact, as Christ was hanging on the cross... He was suspended between heaven and earth and several folks walked by His quivering body. And King James says they reviled against Him. They reviled against Him. The American standard says they railed on Him according to the record in Matthew 27, verse number 39. You know what the, the word literally suggests? They blasphemed Him. Here was a, a situation where Jesus is hanging on the cross and folks were coming around by Him. They, the King James railed on Him, but actually what they're doing, they are blasphemo Him. They are speaking evil of Him. The Apostle informs us that those who discredited the divine sonship were guilty of blasphemy. Now, if you got the context of Matthew 12, I didn't do that. I should have done that. The context, Jesus has just performed a miracle. Look at what He says in verse 24 when the, of Matthew 12. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, The fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. So here Jesus performed a miracle. He cast out a demon, and they said that He did that only by uh, Beelzebub. They were denying His sonship. They were denying His authority. And when you deny the authority and the sonship of Jesus Christ, then you are blaspheming. So you've got the blaspheming against God. You've got blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. What else do you have? We've got blaspheming uh, the Holy Spirit. Now look at what He said. This is within the context, the groundwork, 
the platform of denying the power of Jesus. They said He did not do that of His own power. So what does He say? Every sin and blaspheming shall be forgiven unto men. <clears throat> but the blaspheming against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Within the context, the Lord indicated those who spoke against Him could find pardon, but those who spoke against the Spirit could not. Why? What's the difference? Is that making any sense to you? You can blaspheme against God, you can be forgiven. You can blaspheme against Christ and you'll be forgiven. Matter of fact, one of the key characters in the, Old, in the New Testament was the Apostle Paul, and he said in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 13 that he was an injurious man and that he had blasphemed against Jesus Christ. He was a blasphemer, and yet he was forgiven. So here was a man uh, that blasphemed was forgiven. You can be forgiven. But what about this idea of blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? And you cannot be forgiven in this age, in the Mosaic age, nor in the age to come. Let's look at it and let's see. Since both Christ and the Spirit are deity. Let's go and look it up some passage. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you remember Acts 5, verses 3 and 4? Where Ananias and Sapphira, they, the Bible says that they had lied. One passage says they lied unto God, and the next verse, or the couple of verses down, it says they lied unto the Holy Spirit. Verse 3, Peter said, Why hath thou filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the money? And you, verse 4 says, You didn't lie against uh, men, you lied against God. What did they lie against God, or did they lie against the Holy Spirit? I suggest to you there's no difference because all three are deity. Now, Jesus could have said this as, as we go into this a little bit. What Jesus could have said, He could have said, you can deny Me, you can deny uh, the Father, and you can deny the Holy Spirit, and it will be forgiven to you. But He didn't say that. He said, you can deny Me, you can deny Jesus, but if you deny and blaspheme against the Holy Spirit... You can't be forgiven. Why? Evidently, the Holy Spirit had something to do in revealing the last message, the last testament uh, that was given to mankind. There's no other way. There's no other means to be pardoned. If you reject me, if you reject Jesus in the Mosaic dispensation, you can be forgiven. But when the Holy Spirit comes and guides them into all truth, and we get the complete revealed Word of God, there is no other means or ways to be forgiven. And I think the key thing here is to understand that the emphasis is to be on the chronological aspect and the functions uh, that is so important. Let's look at it. Notice, though the Jews would presently crucify their Messiah, Nevertheless, with a great outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost and the proclamation of the message of grace, forgiveness of sins upon thousands of them, they could receive pardon. So, if you had blasphemed against Jesus, you were there on the day of Pentecost, you could be forgiven. If you were there on the day of Pentecost and you had railed at Jesus and blasphemoed, that's literally what the word means, blasphemoed, spoke evil of Jesus hanging on the cross, if you were there on the day of Pentecost, you could have been forgiven. Why? When Jesus said these words, it was in the Mosaic dispensation. In Acts chapter 2, you've got the beginning of the Christian era, the Christian dispensation. And friends, if you deny and reject the Holy Spirit, there is no other means of pardon. If though the kingdom of redemption... Was, whose instruction was divinely verified by the workings of the Spirit, Matthew 12, 28, and, and was repudiated, was spoken again. What else would there, there be available that could save men? Absolutely not. If you reject the Holy Spirit, the working of God, and the revelation of God in the Christian age, where are you going to go get forgiveness? It is God that still forgives. It is Jesus Christ that's still your Savior, but it's the Holy Spirit that reveals the means of pardon. Wayne Jackson, 
did a masterpiece. I mean, a wonderful job of, uh, of explaining this. And he goes into detail like this. He said, just suppose that you had been guilty of blaspheming against God, speaking against God, that's what the word means, railing against Christ, blaspheme old Christ. Let's just suppose. And you might felt like that it was hopeless because you had heard that Jesus had arose from the grave. That had never happened before when a man actually was coming forth from the grave never to die again. And he said, you remember as we've gone through this series of lessons, uh, that, hey, I'm going to go away. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter is going to come upon you. It's going to guide you into all truth. There you was on the day of Pentecost. You heard this marvelous sermon. You saw and you witnessed the outpouring of God's Spirit upon the apostles. They began to speak in tongues. Every man heard in his own language. And for the very first time, you've been guilty of blaspheming against God, blaspheming Him, speaking against uh, Jesus Christ, and you're there that day, and the law of pardon is given. The scheme of redemption has begun as it began to unfold in the ministry of Jesus. And here it is brought to fruition. And you know without a doubt, when you read a Scripture like Acts 2.38, when they ask what to do, uh, to be saved, they were told to repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Did that include all sins or some sins? What if they had blasphemed and railed? Well, let me ask you a question. Let's just suppose they denied the message in Acts 2, like many people do today. Would they not have been blaspheming against God, speaking against the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit gave the message? Well, absolutely. You see, some folks think they, they can't put the puzzle together. They make this thing so complicated. And what Jesus is saying is that in this age, in the, in the Mosaic age, that's going to be done away with. You can be forgiven. But if you deny and reject uh, against or blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit teaches in essence, you can never, ever be forgiven. That's exactly what the Lord is saying. Now, some people are, uh, have speculated and said, no, I think it's maybe you're just saying something bad against the Holy Spirit. Well, let me ask you a question. Weren't they people recorded in the New Testament that spoke against and rejected the message of the Holy Spirit? Well, sure they did. If they had a change of mind, could they be forgiven? Sure they could. But the fact of it is, if we keep on rejecting the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does, and that is reveals the written Word of God, James 1.27 says, uh, whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty, Psalm 19 verse 4, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So you've got the complete revealed Word of God, as it's been revealed to mankind, this is God's last will and testament. There is no other way that you can be saved. Don't look for another way. Don't look for a time or a period like they were in the days of Jesus when they knew the Christ would die and there would be established a new law. The new law is here. How did we get the new law? We got the new law by the working of the Holy Spirit as it inspired these men to speak as they were moved, born along, the Bible says. So, when one hardens himself against the gospel plan, blaspheme against the Spirit of God, and those who continue in such disposition have no means of obtaining forgiveness. In other words, if you how, how do you going to know today what God wants you to do to be saved? You didn't you didn't have Back in the older days, you had the scribes. You had the, the teachers of the day, the rabbis of the day. Uh, maybe they had just bits and pieces of Isaiah or Psalms or whatever, but did you know today that we have the total, complete, revealed Word of God, and we didn't get it by accident. We got it by the plan of God. As these men spake, they spoke as they were born along by the Holy Spirit. Friends, these men of God spake. 
When? When they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Is that a coincidence? No, 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 no. John 13, 14, 16, John said, Jesus said to these apostles that I must go away. And if I go away, when the Spirit of God has come upon you, then you shall be reminded of all the things that I have taught to you, bring to your remembrance. Do you appreciate the transmission and the, and the, the process where we got the Bible? You can know it's a fact that it is the Word of God. It's all truth. So therefore, this uh, disposition of I'm going to reject what Jesus says, I'm going to reject what God says, I'm going to reject what the Holy Spirit says, you can't be forgiven. There's no other way. There's no other means. There's no other plans. But there are other ways of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Would it not be blaspheming to deny the very personality of Jesus? Indeed it would. And there are a lot of cults that do that. There was a, uh, I believe it was Drew, and I can't remember who all went with us. I know Chandler and Drew and Hatton. I believe it was us four. We were talking to a couple of young men up in Lafayette area. I had uh, probably been three or four months ago. And this is the very thing that we were trying to prove to them, that Jesus Christ was not an angel, that He was in a pre-incarnate state, that in His pre-existent state, he came, He left. The Bible says that He was poor. Or He was rich, He became poor for your sake. He who knew no sin became uh, sin that you might be made the righteousness of God. My friends, Jesus was in heaven. He came to this earth. He was God in the flesh. And they said, no, 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 you don't, you don't have that right. You don't understand. You're taken away from the very deity of Jesus when you say that He was a created being. You're taken away from His deity when you say that He was like an angel. No, He wasn't an angel. And no, He was not a created being. He was God in the flesh. He was deity. So, that's what... I don't like to mention names publicly, but that's what several of these groups, they do, uh, that were started in Salt Lake City and... Uh, others like Joseph Smith, they believed that Jesus Christ was not God in the very beginning. Well, that's blaspheming against uh, Jesus. That's taking away. And you, by the way, in, in reality, it's blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit reveals to us, John 1.1 1, 1, that we talked about, John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh, the Word among us, and we beheld His glory, full of grace and truth. And we know without a doubt that Jesus was God, and in His pre-incarnate, pre-existent state, that He was God. He came to this earth. He emptied Himself, Philippians 2, uh, verses 4 through 9. So therefore, to deny that is to reject what the Holy Spirit teaches. And if you keep on rejecting that, how could you be forgiven? If Jesus said that... One must believe, John 8, 24. Unless you believe I am He, you shall die in your sins. If you keep on not doing that, if you keep on believing that you don't have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, even though He said in John 14, 6, I am the way, Acts 4, 12, there's n n none other salvation than any other, and Jesus and Him alone, are you not re rejecting what the Holy Spirit's revealed? You can't be forgiven. Not only that, any sign for which one would seek forgiveness through God's prescribed plan can be forgiven. And this has been demonstrated by case by case of no less than the Apostle Paul. So any sin for which one seeks forgiveness through God's prescribed plan can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. But you've got to do it on God's terms. God's pardon is uh, redemption, His justification of man has to be according to the teachings of the Holy Spirit, of the Word of God. See, most religious folks don't understand that. They, they don't understand exactly how we got the Bible and what it means to reject the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. In 1 Timothy 1.13, prior to his conversion, he, Saul of Tarsus, was a persecutor persecutor, he was an injurious man, and he obtained mercy in verse 13. Here was a man uh, that in the Christian age, Christian dispensation, that was ushered in. Now, how do I know that? How can I prove that? Let me prove it to you. 
In Joel 2, it says that in the last days, God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Joel 2, 28, follow. You know what Acts 2 says about verse 17? This was that was, was spoken by the prophet Joel. What did Joel say? That in the last days, God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Then he said in the book of Acts, this is a fulfillment of what Joel said. What? The last days. So we're living in the last days. I've heard Christians say, man, look at the signs of the time. We're living in the last days. Friends, we've been living in the last days ever since Acts 2. We're in the last period of history. As far as uh, biblical history, there's not going to be another plan. So when he, in his penitent faith, submitted to the Lord's command to be baptized, his sins washed away in Acts 22, verse 16, and that included him blaspheming. Now, in, I think it's very technical that when you say that you can blaspheme, Jesus said you can blaspheme me, you can blaspheme God, but if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you can't be forgiven. That's technical unless you understand the chronological order of which He said that. Number one, God, Jesus, Jesus is going to go back to the Father, but the Holy Spirit is going to be active in bringing about the New Testament and the means of pardon. And this same uh, gracious, comprehensive promise that was a pardon is given to every person, available to every child of God. Those who have acted uh, injuriously, those uh, with reference to Jehovah, they want to repent, they can be forgiven. Now, I want to go to a passage because it was brought to my attention. Somebody gave this to me today and wanted me to ask me a good, good question, so I want to deal with it. Let's go to 1 John 5, and our time is almost up. Maybe this will be a good question and answer. Uh, but someone said, sent me a message and said, is it possible that 1 John 5, verse 16, is the unpardonable sin? If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. It's not that there are different levels of sin, that one sin uh, is not as bad as the other, so therefore you can commit that sin and a brother can pray with you and, 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 be forg and you'll be forgiven. But that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about the different degrees of sin. He's talking about the attitude of the sinner. And the attitude of the sinner is, the first one is, he could commit a sin that's not under death because he's willing to forgive, be forgiven. He's willing to ask for forgiveness. He recognizes it as a sin. There is a sin unto death, and I do not say that he shall pray for it. You know what he meant by that? There is a situation where a man is so... Uh, engrossed in sin, and he's got a mindset that he doesn't care what God said, he'll never repent of it. You can't pray for that man to be forgiven. Why? Because he refuses to repent. But friends, God's grace and mercy is extended to any and all, and it's all based upon the condition of a man's heart, a person's heart. If a person's got the mentality, God, I've sinned against you, I'm sorry, I want you to forgive me, God will forgive. The only way you're going to get that instruction is from the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit was to reveal His message. Therefore, if you want to know what God wants you to do to be saved today, it's different than that during the Mosaic Dispensation. You look at what and how they became Christians in the first century. If you want to know how you're supposed to worship God in the Christian era, the Christian Dispensation, you don't go back to the book of Moses. You don't go to those five books of law. You go to the New Testament. And there you can see how God's instruction through the Holy Spirit told us what to do in this dispensation, this era, to worship God. You see the difference? You can sin against me. You can rail against me. You can rail against God. You'll be forgiven. But if you rail and speak against and deny the Holy Spirit in the age to come, the Christian age, God has no way to forgive you. There are other schools of thought, but I believe this is within the context of what Jesus is saying. They were denying His authority. They were denying His sonship. They were denying that He did this miracle. And therefore, 
Uh, I know some brethren say you cannot blaspheme against the Holy Spirit today. I believe you can. And how you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit is to deny the work of the Holy Spirit and deny the teaching of the Holy Spirit. God has no other way to save you. There's nothing else that you can do. This is the last will and testament ratified by the very blood of Jesus. Therefore, you're going to be judged by it. And that was all given by the working of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Said a whole lot in about 25, 30 minutes there. Anyone that would like to have that outline, uh, if you want a whole lot of outlines, I've got a whole lot of outlines I can give you. But I believe this is the position uh, that makes more sense within the context of uh, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. The key to it is not in this age, that is Mosaic, nor in the age to come. That's the key to it. If you're not a Christian tonight, you can become one. Man, it is an amazing thing to be a child of God. You agree with that? Yes, it is, man. I'm telling you right now, people are dying and they're going to their graves unprepared to meet God. We are children of the King. We are God's people. We have obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by repenting of our sins and making that good confession like they did in New Testament days. And we were baptized to have our sins washed away by the Holy Spirit that revealed that to us. That's how we know. I remember, not from this pulpit, but from the old building, in 1998 when I had the public discussion with that fellow, there was an older man came down here he said, I don't care how much Bible you know. He said, I wouldn't take what I've got right here for a thousand Bibles that go up in the sky. That's dangerous, friends. You're putting more emphasis on what you think and what you feel than what God says. You're not going to be judged based on your feelings. You're going to be based upon what, based upon what the Scripture says. Therefore, you need to become a child of God like Jesus said to become a child of God like in the New Testament, like the Holy Spirit revealed to us, that way you can know you're right, without a doubt. You can know you're a Christian. If you've done that, and uh, you feel like you need the prayers of this good congregation, we'll pray with you, for you. Uh, it's called God's second law of pardon. You find it throughout the Scripture, where that we confess our faults one to another, and He'll forgive us. He's faithful and He's just. Forgive us all of our sins, First John 1 and verse 9. If, if you're subject, Lord's invitation, would you come while together we stand as we sing?